Welcome to J111. This is lecture three. Today we're going to be talking about developing your own voice. And so now, what does this mean? Um, we shall see. When writing a feature article, there are three other elements that you should keep in mind um, as you develop the story. And this is voice, tone, and style, which expresses the attitude of a writer at that moment or in relation to the particular subject and audience and targeted audience. So this should not be confused with the same vague, vague some vague sense of personal style or personality um, of the writer. So these are technical terms and we shall go through them one by one. So first, voice. So this refers to the voice of the subject or the voice of the writer. It answers the question, who is speaking? Now, that question will depend on what the article is all about. Sometimes it is best that um, we let the readers hear the voice of our source, of our subject. And there are times when, especially when, when the writer is a participant observer, then that voice shifts to the writer um, herself. So, so it becomes once... Um, you want to get your own feelings or your own viewpoint across to your readers based on what you are experiencing or experienced. The voice can also be institutional. It doesn't have to be one person. So, for example, you're, you could be writing about um, UP during martial law. It could be the voice of the studentry at the time as a whole or the voice of the institution. Um, it could be an academic voice, especially if one is more formal, especially if the writing demands that it be more formal. So the, this voice changes depending on um, the subject matter. Tone, on the other hand, is the attitude conveyed in the writing. So it may encompass formality, intimacy, objectivity. Um, it shows um, the readers whether what kind of um, approach you are striving in the feature article. Now, there are four basic um, dimensions of tone. So first is the funny versus the serious. Um, is the writer trying to be humorous or is the subject approached in a serious way? Sometimes it depends on the publication that we are writing for, whether we should be humorous or not. Um, there are certain publications that prefer something with wit and humor. And there are certain publications, for example, industry magazines that would prefer a more formal tone um, in the articles written. Then there is the formal versus the casual. Again, it depends on the publication you are writing for. Um, if you're writing for, let's say, W, Rolling Stones Magazine, um, maybe Cosmo or Preview, then you could, you could sometimes use the casual tone. But if you're writing for something more formal, for example, Panorama, um, you know, or... or um, news break or um, one of these news magazines then the tone the tone needs to be more uh, formal than casual then there's also the respectful versus the irreverent uh, majority whether you're writing for a fashion magazine or an industry magazine they would prefer a respectful tone. Um, the exemption maybe would be some um, magazines that are like really off the beaten track or they, they specifically have a target audience. For example, Rolling Stones magazine um, sometimes have a room for um, irreverent type articles, especially if your subject matter is um, himself irreverent. Um, so it really depends on um, 
what you're writing about or who you're writing about. Um, then there's the, finally, the enthusiastic versus the matter of fact. Um, if we're striving to persuade the audience, for example, we want to persuade them to be um, fans of a certain band or a certain celebrity, or we want them to read a, a particular book, then we have to sound enthusiastic. Um, you know, we, we just watched a very good film and we're doing the review, then if we like the film, then that enthusiasm um, should re be reflected in the article. But if we're doing something of a more serious nature, for example, talking about a particular industry or it's an industry publication, a trade magazine, then of course, the best approach is to have a matter of fact tone, just telling it like it is um, without the embellishments. So tone is conveyed by diction. This means the choice and use of words and phrases. One's viewpoint, syntax, how you use grammar properly, how you put words and phrases together, and the level of formality. So even this has certain levels. Um, it's the way you express yourself in speech and writing. Do I use idiomatic expressions? Um, what are my word choices? Do I try to minimize complicated words? So it really adds to the type of tone you are trying to um, show uh, your readers. So there are three things that you can ask yourself to determine if, if you are using the correct tone. First is, why am I writing this? Second, wh who is my intended audience? So that, especially this question, should tell you, how do I connect with them? Is it, will I be able to connect with them better if I'm formal or casual? Um, you know, so it depends on who your audience uh, will be. And what do I want the readers to learn or understand or think about after reading my feature? So these are things that you can ask yourself before you determine how to approach the writing of the article. Lastly is style. Style is a technical term for the effect a writer can have through the attitude, language, and mechanism mechanics of writing. So like tone, it is the writer's choice of diction, but this time we're looking at the sentence construction and literary techniques um, that the writers, the writer um, uses. Will, for example, the, even the paragraph length um, or the difference, the short and long lengths, how they are combined, the short and long sentences, um, the use of idiomatic expression, how is it used, how often um, do we use cliche phrases or not. So all of this adds to a person's style. For example, Hemingway wrote very short sentences and he used simple words, while George Orwell used long sentences, including periodic and cumulative sentence types for and a more complex diction. Um, so again, while you may have a personal style like Hemingway and Orwell, the style could also change depending on the publication. And if you want to have a more diverse audience, if you want to be able to write for more publications rather than just one, then it's always good to be able to change one style um, to suit um, the publication we are targeting. So if the writing reflects a consistent choice or pattern, then it is perceived as coherent and harmonious. The style supporting the content, the writer's purpose and style clearly have a cause and effect relationship because style is distinct for each type of feature. 
it, if possible, this is discussed with your editor. So, yes, um, sometimes the style is dependent on um, what the editor prefers. Especially if you are a freelancer, it's always good or you have a better chance of getting published if you discuss with the editor what their preferred voice, tone, and style um, would be. So the last word goes to style because style puts together all three elements. So it is the amalgamation of writing techniques by which you communicate a desired tone and voice. Style is the part that you can control often in revision and editing. It includes everything from sentence structure and word choice to grammar convention. As Samuel Butler, another famous author, had said, the old saying of Buffon's that style is the man himself is as near the truth as we can get. But then most men mistake grammar for style as they mistake correct spelling for the words or schooling for education. So let's not make the same mistake. For lesson three, um, please read at the additional reference, which is indicated in your syllabus. Then proceed to the homework, which is to compare the following articles. Again, this is listed in both the website and in your syllabus. The links are there, although a hard copy is already posted as well. Um, on the website. Then go to the Padlet, exercise three, and answer the following questions. What story version did you like best and why? And then read the articles again. So don't just read it once, read it twice. And the second time, determine the difference in tone, in voice, and style of the three authors writing about the same subject, okay? So this, I think, by reading these three articles, you will, be, you will better understand what I mean or what I'm trying to say when I talk about voice, tone, and style.